Hi guys, welcome to the second section, security. In this section, we will start with secure coding and vulnerabilities. We will then see whether Python is secure or not. After that, we will move to security issues and strategies. Finally, we will see secure coding strategies. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with secure coding and vulnerabilities. In this video, we are going to take a look at information security architecture, secure coding, and common security vulnerabilities. A secure architecture involves creating a system that is able to provide access to data and information to authorized people and systems while preventing any unauthorized access. Creating an architecture for information security involves, first, is confidentiality. It ensures that data is not exposed to unauthorized access or modification. Integrity. It ensures the data can be trusted as it flows through the system across its components. Availability. It ensures that the system will not deny service to its authorized users. The three aspects of confidentiality, integrity, and availability, often called the CIA triad, form the cornerstones of building information security architecture for our system. These aspects are aided by other characteristics. Authentication verifies the identity of the participants of a transaction and ensures that they are actually those who they purport to be. Authorization gives rights to a specific user role to perform a specific task or groups of related tasks. Non-reputability. Security techniques that guarantee that users involved in a transaction cannot later deny that the transaction happened. For example, a sender of an email cannot later deny that they had sent the email. A recipient of a bank funds transfer cannot later deny that they received the money, and so on. Secure coding is the practice of software development that guards programs against security vulnerabilities and makes it resistant to malicious attacks right from program design to implementation. These are the strategies of secure coding. First is definition of areas of interest of the application that is identifying important assets in code data of the application, which are critical and needs to be secured. Next is analysis of software architecture. That means analyzing the software architecture for obvious security flaws and ensures confidential data is protected via proper authentication and authorization techniques. After that is review implementation detail. It reviews the code using secure coding techniques. Ensure peer view is done with a view to finding security holes. Then we have verification of logic and syntax that reviews code logic and syntax to ensure there are no obvious loopholes in the implementation. The next is white box or unit testing. The developer unit tests his code with security tests apart from tests ensuring functionality. Last is black box testing. In this testing, the application is tested by an experienced QA engineer who looks for security loopholes such as unauthorized access to data, pathways accidentally exposing code or data, weak passwords or hashes. Let's have a look at some common security vulnerabilities. First is overflow error. It includes buffer overflow and in integer or arithmetic overflow. Buffer overflows allows attackers to take control over systems by gaining access to the application stack or heap memory by carefully crafted attack data. Integer or arithmetic overflow are errors that occur when a rhythmic or mathematical operation on integers produces a result that is too large for the maximum size of the type used to store it. Integer overflows can create security vulnerabilities if they are not properly handled. Second one is invalidated or improperly validated input. Invalidated input can cause major vulnerabilities where attackers can trick a program into accepting malicious input, such as code data or system commands, which, when executed, can compromise a system. Next is improper access control. Modern-day applications should define separate roles for their classes of users, such as regular users, and those with special privileges, such as super users or administrators. When an application fails to do this or does it incorrectly, it can expose routes or workflows. After that is cryptography issue that simply ensures that access control is in place is not enough for hardening and securing a system. Next is insecure authentication. Prefer secure authentication techniques on a web server over insecure ones. For example, prefer Kerberos authentication in a large shared network over less secure alternatives such as lightweight directory access protocol or NT-LAN manager. The next is use of weak passwords, easy to guess or default or trivial passwords are the bane of many modern-day web applications. Reuse of secure hashes, secret keys. 
They are usually specific to an application or project and should never be reused across applications. Whenever required, generate fresh hashes and or keys. The next is weak encryption techniques. Weak hashing techniques, invalid or expired certificates, keys, password enabled SSH. After that is information leak. A lot of web server systems, mostly due to open configuration or misconfiguration, or due to lack of validation of inputs, can reveal a lot of information about themselves to an attacker. Here are some examples. Server meta information. An open index page. Open ports is a common error to provide world access to application ports running on remote web servers instead of limiting access to them by specific IP addresses or security groups by using firewalls, such as IP tables. Next is race condition. A race condition exists when a program has two or more actors trying to access a certain resource, but the output depends on the correct order of access, which cannot be ensured. Attackers can take advantage of the situation to insert malicious code, change a file name, or sometimes take advantage of small time gaps in the processing of code to interfere with the sequence of operations. System clock drifts. This is the phenomenon where the system a local clock time on a server slowly drifts away from the reference time due to improper or missing synchronization. Over time, the clock drift can cause serious security flaws such as error in SSL certification validation, which can be exploited by highly sophisticated techniques like timing attacks, where an attacker tries to take control over the system by analyzing time taken to execute cryptographic algorithms. Time synchronization protocols like NTP can be used to mitigate this. In secure file or folder operations, programmers often make assumptions about the ownership, location, or attributes of a file or folder that might not be true in practice. This can result in conditions where a security flaw can occur or where we may not detect tampering with the system.